Welcome, welcome, Lobster Bird here, going live on embodiment. <laughs> what is it? Why is everyone talking about it? Do we actually need it? All of these questions answered and more, plus potentially an embodiment experience. So welcome, if you're here, say hi. I would love for this to be an interactive experience together. Uh, or if you're watching this on replay, let me know. And throughout any of this, feel free to ask questions in the comments and I will answer them. But I would say first, let's get in here and ground into our bodies before we talk about what embodiment is. So if you are able to, you can go ahead and close your eyes. Don't do that if you're driving or something. But you can go ahead and close your eyes and let's just take a few deep breaths together, exhaling everything and then breathing in and exhaling. Again, breathing into your body and exhaling all the air. And when you get to the bottom of the exhale, exhale out everything else that's in there. Like you might have to like push it out. So it's all the way, don't hold anything back. And then big breath in, into your body and into your field all around you. And exhale and let that go. And just calling our presence and our beingness into our body in this moment. So you can call yourself by name. So I would say, Lobster Bird, come into my body. <laughs> you would use your name. And once you call yourself into your body, say, I am your name. I am Lobster Bird and I am here now. Calling our presence into our bodies and then just taking a moment to say hi to your body. Literally, you can just say hi body <laughs> and ask your body, how is it feeling right now? And then listen, your body might respond in a sensation, it might respond in words, but just asking, body, how are you feeling right now? And then waiting. The waiting is the important magic part, the listening. <laughs> and that is when the information arises. So now that we've come into our bodies and tuned into our bodies, Let's talk a little bit about what embodiment is. And the reason I wanted to come on here and talk about this is because uh, embodiment is being thrown, the word is being thrown all over the internet. I'm seeing it these days, including me. I've been using it a lot. Uh, as you might've seen, I am facilitating a wealth embodiment experience over the next four months. And, you know, what that's really about is about tapping into your creative power and resources. It's about, you know, making money so that you can fund and fuel your dreams. And it's really about dismantling the conditioning from our systems that's keeping us stuck and sick. Um, this is so that we can co-create a world where all can thrive. And so it's like, well, what does embodiment have to do with all that? <laughs> I want to answer that, but I also want to talk about how I'm hearing about embodiment from all kinds of people everywhere. And I've, you know, tuned into some things. I've even done, you know, embodiment workshops and stuff or things that said they were embodiment. And I was like, hi, JoJo's here, <laughs> fully embodied in their Kermit sweater. <laughs> um, I've done embodiment things and been like, that wasn't really embodiment. <laughs> You know, they just led us through a meditation that had to do with possibly um, becoming embodied, but was that actually embodiment? So I'm going to talk about what embodiment really is. I'm looking at my notes because I don't want to forget anything. So what it is, you know, from uh, an origin kind of standpoint, and then also my personal evolution through my understanding of it, and then we will do a legit embodiment experience together. Sound good? Yeah, JoJo's, JoJo's into it. 
Okay, so you either gotta chill here or go chill there. Go be embodied. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so what is embodiment? Uh, so embodiment comes from the, in psychology, it comes from the lineage of somatic psychology. So there's different branches of psychology, like cognitive, you know, psychology and neuroscience and behavioral psychology. And this comes from somatic uh, psychology. And it assumes a really holistic approach that events that happen don't just affect our minds, but they affect our physical bodies, they affect our emotions, they do affect our minds, uh, they in and our cognitive abilities and our spiritual being as a whole. So somatic uh, psychology is really a more holistic approach. And it also seems that, you know, when events are processed, they're processed through the senses. So all of them are processed through the senses. So if we're just processing things through the logical mind, which is what, you know, a lot of therapy is rooted in, um, talk therapy and things like that, uh, we're just working on the level of the mind. And, you know, and also that thoughts are physiological. So even our thoughts have a physiological response and that actually our cognitive mind is driven by the body's response to external stimuli and things that happen in the world. So things aren't just happening in the mind, they're also happening in the body and neuroscience is starting to support how actually the body drives, it's like the interface between the intellectual mind and the external world and it actually drives a lot of our interactions. So the body itself is really powerful, but that's not the only part of somatic psychology and it's not the only part of embodiment, ironically enough, because embody, the word means <laughs> in the body, right? And so embodiment is the process of getting into the body. The whole thing is that it's also just not, it's not just the body and it has a huge impact on our minds which, you know, moving out of this kind of Cartesian way of thinking that, you know, I think therefore I am, what we're understanding now is I'm embodied, therefore I am, which makes a lot more sense, <laughs> doesn't it? Let me know if that does it in the comments. So it comes from that tradition and, um, you know, somatic therapies uh, generally include some kind of movement therapy and or dance. They include uh, visualization often, not always, but often. Uh, also, mm, some sensory awareness activities and things like progressive muscle relaxation. Different ways of really coming into contact with these different parts of us via the body and our senses. So that's what embodiment is from a psychology standpoint. And I also want to add that embodiment work has a much longer and deeper tradition and understanding in indigenous cultures and in ancient traditions that really did embodiment, maybe didn't call it that, or maybe they did in um, whatever their culture's language is. But using these different practices, modalities, and especially this holistic approach to healing. And this includes healing things like trauma, which just to touch on for a second, as we know, you know, from books say the body keeps the score by Bessel van der Kolk <laughs> or My Grandmother's Hands uh, by Resma Lamarkin. These are two amazing books that really talk about how you know, the body is, um, how, how trauma, you know, really lives in the bo in our bodies. And so, in a lot of indigenous cultures, they really understood that in order to heal through the traumas that happen to people in their life, it takes actually going outside the logical mind. Like we can't do it within the logical mind because the power of our emotions, the power of our body's memory and experience is far more potent, it's far more, it's got far more of a handle on us than just our mind. And the mind is no match for what the body and our emotions and our spirit also can really do. And so, you know, indigenous cultures knew this and had rituals and practices and ceremonies that were really all about embodiment. And it was really about, 
you know, going into the logical mind, uh, and they did that through ways of, you know, trance, uh, through different kind of movement and dance ceremonies, through initiation rituals, um, so many different ways. And also, <laughs> I just got my herbalism certification. I'm super excited. <laughs> uh, but, you know, using herbalism and the plants and the natural world to come deeper into our embodiment. These are all practices that come from long lineages, right, that really got severed along the way and is part of why our embodiment has become severed along the way. These are all things that are in each and every one of our lineages that we can tap into and utilize to come into our embodiment. Yeah, and let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. And so I wanted to briefly talk about uh, embodiment from the evolution of my own understanding and then we can pop into an embodiment experience together. <laughs> so a little bit of backstory. Uh, it only starts when I was age two. <laughs> Uh, but I have to go there because it was at that age that I was thrown into dance school. The only requirement being that I was potty trained. Luckily I was. I don't even know if I was speaking yet, but I was moving. And here's the thing about me and dance school is that I was not good at dance. <laughs> I did it for my whole childhood and stop for a while then in my adult life which I'll talk about in a second but what I mean is I'm not good at it is that I was directionally challenged and so in a traditional dance class I found mirroring very difficult and I found following very difficult and I found following very difficult in a room full of mirrors <laughs> because like for me my sensory perception couldn't really tell what was going on by watching it externally and then trying to put it in my body like it just did it my brain doesn't work that way uh, not to mention that in my own neurodivergence also had this issue with being perceived this happens for a lot of neurodivergent people particularly autistic people is that um there is this deep like anxiety around being perceived even if no one's looking at them but then especially if someone is and then if, especially if someone is and then judging like the way that their body is and is moving and needs to be moving <laughs> dance was actually <laughs> slightly traumatizing for me not to throw that word around but you know being a person that would uh, naturally diverge from that I kept trying to force myself into that and it didn't it didn't really work even though I kept at it eventually I stopped and I went and I started to study psychology and I got my undergrad in psychology and I started to study the mind I when I was in high school I got my wisdom teeth taken out and I was put on uh, painkillers. <laughs> and so I was totally out of it on the couch in my parents' house. And just like, I was, it was kind it was like a trance state actually. And in and out of the state, I was getting all kinds of, you know, information and memories and things. And I started to read this book called, A Child Called It. And there was something about that book and the, you know, perseverance of the human spirit. And that there are things that we can do to really heal through some of the most deepest and darkest things that have happened to us that were not our fault and not through our own doing set me on this course uh, to want to help people to heal. So I started to study psychology and then I realized like the psychological models that existed at that time were also much like my dance school <laughs> were very about diagnosing things and then prescribing things or like behavioral changes and the rebel part of me was like, this isn't it either. So then I became an artist and I moved to New York City. And during that time, at some point during that time, I found postmodern dance. And this opened up my world and it was so healing. I'm still only realizing now, many years later, how healing this was because I was working with a lot of different humans and companies and the thing about postmodern dance is that it's so much about process. It's really about the process of embodiment, which is why I'm bringing this in. I worked with amazing 
people <laughs> such as City Company and Butoh artists from all over the world and Contact Improv and all of these different ways in which to really, you know, be paying attention to the body and to be creating a world all around us from being able to intuit and perceive and communicate with our bodies, the, our inner worlds, and the external world and the stimuli we're getting from that. And if you've ever seen any postmodern theater or dance, it's so weird and like surprising and amazing. It's kind of like life. Um, and also tends to be really abstract because all of this, um, Surpri like surprising is the word that just keeps coming to me. It's exhilarating also because what's being created isn't just being created from here or even from the body. I was pointing to my mind in case you can't see from the brain. It's not created just from the brain or the body. Uh, it's created from this like communication with kind of all of the cosmos and all of the microcosm that makes up the entirety of our universe. I know it's deep, but <laughs> studying and practicing that for many years became a part of who I am. So then when I, you know, quit theater, <laughs> uh, I went to Japan. I read about this in my first book, Phase Out. But when I went there, I had a breakdown of my body and I was in paralysis and I was on the floor for weeks. And that catalyzed my first accidental pilgrimage. And you know, that was my body's wisdom telling me that I had to stop what I was doing and I had to live my life in a whole different way. So this is also a part of embodiment, which I will get to in a second. And that pilgrimage that I went on really, um, it introduced me to new, new, more new states of being outside of the ordinary and really set me on my healing path. And I have been devoted to studying and practicing energy and, and simultaneously along with the body. And where am I going with this? My path is such a spiral. <laughs> uh, and so that really then reignited something else that was in me when I was really young, which is my earth magic path is what I call it. And it is both the mystical and metaphysical nature-based spirituality combined with very practical modes of regeneration and restoration for this planet, which includes our bodies. Our larger earth body includes our human bodies and vice versa. Uh, and so practicing earth magic opened up a whole new realm for me and in which I realized that everything that we do is all about embodiment and that the world that we are capable of co-creating comes from this powerful place of embodiment and that we have been really severed in our connection in so many ways and just to touch on this for a second is that it has been very intentional because there are systems of power, and I put power in bunny quotes, <laughs> that uh, thrive on these systems of disconnect in which we're disconnected from our bodies, we are disconnected from earth, we are disconnected from our smaller systems like the microbiota or, you know, the biome in the soil, we are hugely disconnected. I mean, we're even, we're disconnected from our brains a lot of the time because we live in this culture of distraction and extraction. And so just to say that this has been very purposefully orchestrated, it's not just a mistake, <laughs> but it's been purpose purposely orchestrated to keep us disconnected in order to keep those systems going. We are now learning that that is not okay and that the only way out of that is through our own embodiment of our own power and our own potential and our own connection to all of the all that is. Because when people are creating from that space, the world just changes. So this is the work that I've been doing in my own practice and have been doing with the people that I work with. And, you know, much as I mentioned 
having an experience that is outside of the norm that really takes you on an initiation and out of the realm of the mind and into a much deeper place and then combined with embodiment practices is really powerful is one story is from one of my pilgrimages one of my pilgrims said to me I don't even understand you know this has been more healing in one week than 10 years of therapy and this is why is because most therapy is geared only towards the smallest part of our logical thinking brains and these that part of us is no match for what our bodies and our emotions and our spirits are truly capable of. So this is why embodiment is such a crucial part of my path. And I would love to hear in the comments if it is a part of your path as well and in what ways. Um, in the evolution of my understanding of embodiment, and kind of what I see lacking uh, in some forms. And, and you know, each, like, each part of this is important and valid on its own. Uh, for me, I know that my mission here on this planet is to be the embodiment of liberation. <laughs> and in order to liberate, I feel like we need these three different pieces. So the first one is processing our emotions and our experiences through the body. So, you know, oftentimes something happens to us and then it gets caught immediately in a thought loop, you know, that then becomes reinforced. We now know about, you know, neuroplasticity. And so something happens, we start to think a certain way about it. It starts to repeat itself and then it starts to get ingrained into us and then into our behavior. And then our behavior, you know, recreates the same situation over and over again in a nutshell when we're just when that event or that experience is only happening to us on the intellectual level. Anybody have this experience? I know that I have. <laughs> However, when we process these kinds of things through our bodies uh, and through our sensory understanding of it, then the experience becomes something different. It takes on a different meaning to us and it cannot dictate you know I feel like so many people feel like life is happening to them you know like well this is my situation and you know and that's what's happening that's like the little real world happening and that is true you know it is <laughs> and also we have some agency in whether those things continue to happen and the agency is in part allowing these emotions and these experiences to move through our bodies, which often because of this severance, you know, that we have in this disconnect, it often gets cut off right here, the, the neck, you know, and stays trapped in our mind loops and never becomes uh, an experience that is processed through the entirety of our being. Doing this is really powerful. So one way of working with embodiment is you know processing some of the deeper emotions that usually we don't like grief and anger and rage and sadness and loneliness and all the things <laughs> unless we consciously go into a safe space where that is possible uh, or have practices that we can do on our own when those things arrive arrive <laughs> sure <laughs> arise uh, then we won't actually probably process them through our body because if we, you know, like we don't want to almost like let those things in. It feels like it would hurt too much, right? To like really like take that into the full entirety of our being. But the issue is, is if we don't, then those things are running the show anyway, are going unprocessed and then are dictating the experience that we do have. So the first mode of embodiment is processing emotions and experiences through the body and through the senses. The second mode is bringing logic, energy, and imagination into lived embodiment. So this is where we get to utilize both the power of the mind and the body. And we use the body to, in terms of utilizing our imagination, using our dreams, like 
all indigenous people and in all shamanic cultures, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, believe that we dream this world into being. We do, you know, it's been the artists and the visionaries that have come up with a thing that people were like, oh, that can never happen. And then it becomes a thing that happens that changes the entirety of the world as we know it. This is how it works. Right. And so when we utilize our imagination and then we utilize our logic and our intellectual brain and bring all of that into an embodied experience, what we're able to create is astounding. Actually, it's astounding. And so coupled with working with energy, both our own energy and a greater sense of energy is like um, amplifier. <laughs> it's like having the support system that one needs in order to experience what it is that you want in your life uh, and in the world at large, which the world right now needs a new way and needs something different. Hmm. So a lot of us, let's be honest, like are not being the living embodiment of what it is that we wish to see. And there's lots of different reasons for that. And there's no shame in that either. I myself in certain areas of my life, am not like fully living that embodiment. And I know that when I do, when I make the choice to root my conscious awareness and intention to doing that, when I engage in practices that allow it to become a part of me and the way that I'm living my life, that living embodiment of my own imagination is able to shift the world around me. It has done it countless, countless times for me and for the people that I've worked with. Like this is the stuff that miracles are, are made out of basically. And it's, not a miracle in the sense is that it takes one's own devotion and one's own practice and one's own commitment into being a living embodiment. So that's part two, becoming a living embodiment of your imagination, of your energy and the greater energies all around you, using the logical mind in order to make choices and do inspired actions to co-create the world that you wish to see. And so the third mode of embodiment is initiatory embodiment. This is a process. <laughs> and this is a process that a lot of humans would like to skip. And it is a, the skipping of it that has created a lot of destruction, <laughs> to put it bluntly. So in initiation, an initiation isn't just something you do and then it's over. An initiation is something that you go through and you literally, you know, sit with or walk through the fires of something, of an experience, right? In order to come out the other side changed. We can't just think our way into an initiatory experience. We have to live it. It has to be an embodied experience. And when we go through an initiation, what it does is it really puts us in something long enough to overcome the hubris that we have as humans, to really work through the ego that is going to arise and to work through the mm, conceptions that the logical mind feels like it needs to go through in order to experience the truth of something without going through an initiatory experience, like we learn a thing or we have an insight or there's a new technology or we discover a form of magic in this world and we want to use it and we want to share it and we want to like create things and da, 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 da. And without this initiatory embodiment process, we don't know how to wield these powers <laughs> and they go haywire and We've seen this time and time again. I don't think I need to be really specific about that. I would love if you have examples of how that has happened in the world, like without getting political, because we don't need to get political here. But, you know, initiatory embodiment is really 
coming into embodied wisdom, which is a longer process than most of the time we allow, especially in this day and age and in this culture where we want everything fast and immediate and we're scrolling and we have like two second attention spans, right? And everything's trying to sell you something and blah, 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 blah. Reclaiming embodiment as an initiatory experience is crucial in taking back our attention and taking back our power and allowing it to be like the wisdom of nature, which is long and sustaining and thriving. It's taking on nature as your guru, right? And really understanding that because we are nature. We're not part of nature, we are nature. And coming back into that knowing and that practice of being nature is so that we really learn how to wield the power that we have in a way that is beneficial for both our lives and for the whole. So for me, these are the three different modes of embodiment. It's great if you know, you're doing the first one and just, you know, initially feeling all the feels <laughs> and allowing that to really be processed because most of us haven't had that education in the space to learn how to do that. Then it moves on to becoming a living embodiment, right, of what it is that you're co-creating. And then the last one is really, a, it's a ceremonial embodiment where upon the entirety of this world and your life becomes sacred world. When that happens, all of the things going on in the world and in your life will no longer be the case <laughs> like, in the sense that they are now. That is, I promise, when we come into embodiment. So is it necessary? Yes, <laughs> is my thesis. <laughs> embodiment is necessary because we have been so disconnected, because we have been so severed. Embodiment is the answer to that reconnection and to that wisdom and to the having the resources and the ability to co-create this world in a very powerful way. So I would love to do a very brief embodiment experience with you. <laughs> Um, because that's the thing with embodiment. Everyone's talking about it, but it's like, we need to be doing it because the embodiment is the doing. <laughs> so we need to do it so that we can be it and know it. So let's do it. Hmm. Tuning in for a second. If you would like, it's available to you. You can close your eyes. And just to say that this practice that I'm going to guide us through is really because to acknowledge that there's so much going on in the world right now. There's so much pain. There's so much suffering. It, we are in a flare up right now. I mean, we've been in a flare up for the past few years and we are in one again and we will experience more of them. So just to acknowledge that and to say that what I wanna do today is to do an embodiment that I feel like will help with this. And this isn't to bypass what is happening, but in order to process what is happening, that requires deeper work, a safe space and container to do so. I have mine if you'd like to come join me. It's all over my page or you can message me. But, you know, this practice is um, going to be a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, uh, in order to help alleviate some of the suffering that's happening, but to do it in a way that is very gentle uh, and loving. So close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling into every cell and space into your being. Exhaling all the air out of your body. 
and then inhaling into the space all around you, into your field, into your environment, and into space itself. Taking the biggest breath you've taken today. Fast and infinite, and then letting that all go. Uh, you can let that go to sound. Uh, you can, just whatever sound comes out. Uh, Hmm. And then I want you to ask your body in this moment, body, where are you feeling joy? And then listen. You might be feeling joy in your heart somewhere. You might feel joy in a weird place like your toe or you know, the back of your right eye but asking your body where am i feeling joy right now surely there must be somewhere because joy is an energy that is a part of you and even if you haven't felt it in a long time it's still in there somewhere so ask your body and let it tell you where do you feel joy and then breathe into that space. Wherever that is in your actual body, breathe into that space, into your body, bringing your inhale there and exhaling and letting that go. And as you inhale, allowing the joy to expand a little bit from wherever it is in your body, a little further out into your body as you inhale. And as you exhale, even allowing it to ripple out. Continuing to inhale and exhale and on every inhale, allowing it to grow and expand. And with the exhale, waving out and rippling out. And as you do that, noticing the edge where joy, your mind starts to come in and talk to you or mm, or you don't want to feel joy or you feel like you can't feel joy knowing that you are at an edge of your nervous system and we are right now in the embodiment of increasing our capacity for joy so if you can only feel it in that one little spot just breathing into that spot and just seeing and witnessing how that can ripple out for you and then we'll move on and ask your body body where do you feel love? And in the same way, tuning into wherever it is, it might be somewhere familiar, it might be something totally strange, whatever it is, not judging it with your mind, but allowing that to be where your body is feeling love right now. And wherever that is, using the embodiment tool of touch, you can bring your hand there and feel that warmth of love in that part of your body and as you inhale and exhale, allowing that love to radiate out in bigger waves from that space into the other spaces into your body. And you can use the power of your touch to guide that energy of love into these other spaces or you can keep your hands there or whatever touch you have right now to Mm, just like magnify that energy, like sending it energy. Whatever way your body is telling you you want to be touched with love, allow yourself to touch yourself with love right now. And on your next inhale and exhale, letting love go as it infuses into all of your cells and asking your body hey body where are you feeling beauty right now where do you feel beautiful where are you perceiving beauty in yourself right now body And I want you to make 
a sound. So you can breathe into that area of your body where you are experiencing beauty and then make a beautiful sound. <laughs> so beautiful doesn't mean it sounds any particular way. Beautiful means that you are bringing sound, energy, beauty to that space. So I'm gonna do it, you can do it with me. And feeling the reverberations of that sound, amplifying that beauty and bringing it into the rest of your body and into your field around you. And then letting that go on the next exhale. And the last one we'll do is pleasure. Saying, hey body, where are you experiencing pleasure right now? Surely in this world full of pain, there must be one space within you that is capable and is feeling pleasure right now. And tune into that space, wherever that may be. And I want you to use the embodiment tool of movement. So move that space. And movement can be whatever it means to you. Mm, and moving that space where you're feeling pleasure and feeling those waves of movement rippling that pleasure out into the rest of your body. Mm -hmm. Rippling out into your field all around you. And pleasure can also be something that can feel really, um, you know, triggering or we may not be used to it. And so being really kind and gentle with yourself, moving as little or as much as you're capable of, and being with whatever comes up for you in relationship to this movement of pleasure. Good, on your next inhale and your next exhale, letting pleasure go. And for a moment, let's synthesize the joy and the beauty and the love and the pleasure and we'll utilize the other embodiment tool of our intentions and our imaginations and in this moment you can set the intention to bring more of these into your life to experience these sensations and these energies into your life and for a moment, just imagine what that looks like for your life to experience more joy, more beauty, more love, and more pleasure. As you continue to breathe with that, you can vocalize with that, you can move your body with that. These are all embodiment tools. But really imagine what is your life? What does your life look like? How does it feel? How does it sound? How does it smell? When your joy, pleasure, love, and beauty. And then calling all of that and all of you back into your body. Calling yourself by name. Lobster bird, come back into this body. Come fully into this body. It is safe here in this body. I'm caring for you in this body. I am Lobster Bird. I am here now. Insert your name. I am. I am here now. And take a big breath. And exhale. Let that all go. I'd love to know how you feel after doing just a smidgen of embodiment practice. <laughs> so let me know in the comments. And I want to thank you for being here in your body and in your presence, bringing your spirit to this space. And I would love to know any takeaways from this or what you've experienced from this. 
And if you would like to go deeper into accessing your creative power and co-creating the world that you wish to see and be, then send me a message and let me know. I'm here to hold this space because this is the most powerful and potent mode that we have available to us right now to really affect our lives and the world. I'm sending you so much love. <laughs> I love you so much. May you be fully embodied and may we all be free.